welcome to The Near Memo, a weekly conversation about search, social, and commerce. What happened, why it matters, and the implications for local. All right, so let's move on to uh, another category of spam, it's fake profiles <laughs> and, fake, and fake reviews in local results. And Google came yep. out with a blog post this week uh, saying what precisely? Classic Google PR, you know, we've got all these big numbers, we've got machine learning, uh, you know, you could literally have Bard or now Gemini write these press releases. Um, Although it was build. written by Dan Pritchard, who <laughs> has been there a long, long time. Long-time search engineer, that's right. Yeah. Very nice human being. Yes. A very talented guy, um, been there for years. In fact, he came to a couple local local use way back yep. when. So, but clearly, Dan, I'm, I'm going to guess that Dan had to run this post through about eight levels of, of legal and regulatory review. So it came out in sort of every day uh, or every every instance, uh, Google blog speak. So anyway, let's or, get to the, or, the or else Google went through the engineers and said, who's willing to put their name on this blog <laughs> That's right. post? That's right. That's right. Uh, so anyway, onto the content. They re they removed 170 million fake reviews last year. They blocked. um 14 million policy violating videos and 2 million attempts by bad actors to claim GBPs uh, and they blocked 12 million fake GBPs. So these are all, you know, seemingly big numbers. But then if you actually think about the number of Google business profiles in the world, which we think is somewhere between, say, 150 and 250 million, that's basically saying they review, they removed less than one fake review per business in the past year. And we just know, I mean, there's I guarantee there's at least one fake review per business out there still. Um, so it was it was barely a drop in the bucket, as far as I can tell, in terms of, of actually solving this problem. And uh, I just this this just strikes me as, again, like so many um, so many instances of, of Google PR, just like trying to get a story out there um, as a as a sort of engineering performance theater that highlights this the scope there highlights the importance of the problem and tries to make it seem like google has you know google's on top of this problem and they're really not i mean if you actually think about the numbers of listings the numbers of bad actors out there i mean 12 million fake business profiles that could have been one company spinning up a whole bunch of spam i mean that's just that doesn't seem like a very impressive number to anybody who's actually in this space but to the general public and probably to reporters who don't live and breathe the space the way we do, it probably does come across as, oh, Google does have a handle on this. So uh, two things. One that does reflect an improvement, and that is the process when they fail is now formalized. You can actually file a request to have it taken down. It is then appealed. The part, that, part of it that really makes that work, though, is being able to go to the forum, which nobody knows to do, and escalate it to additional times. But at least there's a process. By the same token, in local service ads, where you would think where they claim to vet everything, yet there they've implemented none of these processes, let alone even some rudimentary review spam removals. So it's like, yeah, maybe they've done something in local, as you point out, limited, but in local service ads, they've done nothing. And so it, it to me, is totally incomprehensible. They could bring out a new product that's just a paid version of their previous product and not bring along with it any of the claimed benefits that this article talks about. So, I mean, yep. they're screwing the pooch on two fronts here from where now, I Now, well, in, in, in Google's defense, I'm not sure this is actually a defense, but one, one potential theory for 2024 is that if they continue to go down the path of SGE and MAPS, which Mike, you're going to talk about, it strikes me that they're going to need a much more accurate review corpus to make those results useful and reliable to people using those that new interface so uh, maybe from a in, in, product in theory it finally it finally might actually pencil out for them mathematically uh, economically from a product quality standpoint to actually put real re resources on this problem so two 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 points one is that google said um in its blog post that it received around 20 million contributions. It doesn't say what categories those fall into, photos, reviews, hours, changes, whatever. 20 million contributions a day. I guess that's a worldwide number. 
which which turns into translates roughly into about 7.3 billion contributions. So if you take that number and the 170 million number, that's a tiny little number. Google says yeah. it's 45% better than last year, but we don't know how much more uh, content is coming right. versus last year. That would be the helpful thing to really understand. They got so many contributions last year, this number this year, and we would be able to better evaluate how they were doing, even so it's a relatively small number. So, um, you know, the perception is that Google is doing worse, not better in terms of fighting fake reviews. They claim they, they use the language policy violating reviews, which is a broader category than review fraud. Um, you know, people doing review bombing because they don't like the politics of the business owner or something like that. So there's a broader group of things encompassed there. But it, but despite their representations, I think it's pretty clear that they're not doing substantially better than in the past, although they are removing more reviews. Yeah, so, I would, I would also, I, they might actually be doing better than the, in the past. It's just that it's clearly not good enough is what I would say. So, OK, fair, and I fair would enough. say the phrase policy violating reviews is has nothing to do with the real world. They only view a review as violating policy if within either the content of the review or the metadata of the review, they can ascertain uh, a violation. They will not consider, for example, if an employee leaves your review after they've left, even though as an employee, it's against Google's guidelines, they will not consider any information you submit that it's a truly a, a real world situation where the policy was violated. They don't give a shit. They only care if the, if that person didn't mention he was an employee or she was an employee in the review, then they're not going to take it down. So there's plenty of real world cases, Greg, where they are in fact violations, but Google's unwilling to accept any information in that regard. And it's very frustrating for businesses because they're willing to, you know, obviously in the forums share all kinds of information about the real world situation. Well, and another another thing as you as you bring up this re real world, uh, you know, language, there's there's a real world harm going on in these review fraud cases that you've documented, Mike, in some of the writing you've done about the duct uh, cleaning scams and the LSA fraud, the LSA review fake reviews. People are actually losing money or being harmed in real ways by. I mean, we've seen in our research again and again, reviews are the main thing that people look at. You know, they don't look at the review text so much as the star ratings and the review counts, but they are relying very heavily. It's the number one conversion factor, according to, you know, Darren's, uh, you know, local local search ranking factors. And we've seen it in, in, in real situations in our exactly. user research. And our own and, research. That's right. Right. And and people people again and again for doctors, for lawyers, for tradespeople, you know, every category, they look at reviews as the primary decision criterion and and they're being hurt. People who are seeing fake reviews and choose, um, you know, choose a practitioner, provider, business, uh, maybe wasting their money or worse in the case of that doctor, the orthopedist in New York, who's the New York, Mormon. Right. Yeah, who, who got a, who, a million dollar slap on a wrist, right? I mean, it's just the the. I mean, this was right, but I mean, fault. somebody the New York Attorney General's fault. But I mean, it, it, none of these none of these um, actors in a an actual position of power are taking real steps to curb this behavior. So, although well, and somebody it, again in this in the case of the surgeon, the reviews on fake reviews on Google stayed up until well after New York State charged this person two years into the case. I'm sure New York State had been communicating with Google. Yeah, but what, about if, what if this guy was raised in the forums that they hadn't done anything? What if, what if this guy recommends unnecessary surgery or medical procedures that are, you know, benefit him, but not the patient? I mean, that's that kind of stuff is is going on and it's really having an impact on people's lives. And so this is really what Google needs to think about, not you know, these abstract numbers, but helping real people who really rely on their reviews to make decisions, yep. which which in some cases have uh, irrevocable consequences in their life. I mean, it's one thing to spend three hundred dollars on duct cleaning that should have cost you, you know, a hundred bucks or something. But it's another thing if somebody says, hey, you should have this knee operation or this, 
whatever this uh, other kind of procedure and and you can't take that back two anyway. bits of advice don't find your don't find your doctor on google and don't get your duct cleaned right it's like okay solve that problem <laughs> i will say the other thing is that google i mean there are Google has very powerful tools at its disposal to actually verify reviews. They have basically everyone on the planet's location history who's got Google Maps on their phone. They have access to something like 75% of all U.S. credit card transactions. Um, it, would, it would not be difficult, I don't think, to require some piece of identifiable data that you actually did business with somebody that you're leaving a review for. And Google, Google is uniquely positioned uh, of all of the even of all the big tech companies to be able to do that. And they just haven't brought any of those resources to bear. It doesn't seem like. Although interestingly, the big spammers in reviews use iPhones on VPNs because Google doesn't judge them, can't judge them as harshly as they judge. Right. So why not, why not disallow all reviews left on iPhones via VPN? I mean, this is a pretty easy solution. Sure. You're going to remove some false positives, but you could follow up with the person to say, look, you have to enable location as you're leaving this review or else we're not going to accept it. Yeah. And yeah. that was one of the things that Apple promised in its reviews product, which so far has not really taken off as, as far as I can tell, is that they were going to use things like user location to verify the authenticity of reviews. But I don't know, Mike, do you know anything that's going on there? I don't. I haven't seen anything. No, it's a great question. I, I actually will. Ask my friend at Google and see what he says. At Apple. Right, Apple, I mean. Yeah. Thanks for joining David, Mike, and Greg. To stay on top of the latest developments in local, subscribe to our newsletter at nearmedia.co. We'll see you next week.